It's showdown time, the theoretical framework versus the conceptual framework. In this video, we'll unpack what each of these is, how they differ, and how they're connected so that you can leverage them for maximum impact in your research project. By the way, if you're working on a dissertation or thesis, be sure to grab our free chapter templates to help fast track your write-up. These tried and tested templates provide a detailed roadmap to guide you through each chapter step by step. If that sounds helpful, you can find the link in the description below. Okay, let's get things started. The theoretical framework and the conceptual framework are closely related but distinctly different things. Not only do they look different, but they serve different functions. So let's unpack the first member of this dynamic duo, the theoretical framework. A theoretical framework, also sometimes called a foundation of theory, is essentially a set of concepts, definitions, and propositions that come together to form a structured view of a specific phenomenon. In other words, a theoretical framework is a carefully curated collection of existing theories, models, and frameworks that provide a foundation of core knowledge, a lay of the land, so to speak, upon which you can build your research study. For this reason, the theoretical framework is usually presented fairly early within the literature review section of a dissertation or research paper. Let's say your research aims involve understanding what factors contribute to people trusting investment brokers. In this case, you'd need to first lay down some theory so that it's crystal clear what exactly you mean by people trusting investment brokers. For example, you'd need to define what you mean by trust, as there are many potential definitions of this concept. You'd likely settle on the concept of organizational trust, which is very domain-specific and reflects the trust between an individual and a company or organization. You'd also need to identify what existing theories have to say in relation to your research aim. Specifically, you'd need to outline some of the key literature in relation to organizational trust. Seminal research by Mayer, Davis, and Shorman, for example, would need to make an appearance. Together, this foundational discussion of terminology and seminal theory would form your theoretical framework. Typically, you'll need to present your theoretical framework in written form, although sometimes it will make sense to utilize some visuals to show how different theories relate to each other. This isn't essential though, so don't get too bogged down trying to visualize things. Your theoretical framework may revolve around just one major theory, or it could comprise a collection of different interrelated theories and models. In some cases, there will be a lot to cover, and in some cases, not. Every study is different, so don't get fixated on trying to replicate what you see in other studies. That said, it's definitely useful to look at past dissertations from your university to get a feel for the institutional norms. So to recap, the theoretical framework is the core foundation of theory that you build your study upon. As we always say at Grad Coach, good research stands on the shoulders of giants. The theoretical framework is where you showcase those giants and lay a sturdy base for your own research. Right, now that we've unpacked the theoretical framework, let's dig into the conceptual framework. A conceptual framework is typically a visual representation of the expected relationships and connections between various constructs or variables. In other words, a conceptual framework visualizes how you, as the researcher, view and organize the various constructs and variables within your study. Of course, this view will be based, in part, on insights drawn from your theoretical framework, so there is a natural relationship between the two frameworks. Quite commonly, conceptual frameworks are used to visualize the potential causal relationships and pathways that the researcher expects to find 
based on their understanding of both theoretical literature and empirical or evidence-based research. Therefore, the conceptual framework is often used to develop research questions and hypotheses. If you'd like to learn more about either of these, check out our explainer videos. Links in the description. So let's look at an example of conceptual framework to make it a little more tangible. You'll notice that in this specific conceptual framework, the hypotheses are integrated into the figure. For example, see the blocks labeled H1, H2, etc. This helps to connect the conceptual framework to the rest of the document. Also, the conceptual framework makes use of different shapes, lines, and arrows to help visualize the connections and relationships between different constructs and variables. In short, the conceptual framework provides an opportunity for you to make explicit your understanding of how key constructs and variables are connected. So, be sure to use visual tools to your advantage. Clean design, well-considered colors, and concise text are your friends. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, please help us out by hitting that like button. You can also subscribe for loads of plain language, actionable advice. If you're new to research, check out our free dissertation writing course, which covers everything that you need to get started on your research project. As always, links are in the description. All right, now that we've looked at both frameworks, let's do a quick comparison to cement the key points. The theoretical framework and the conceptual framework are closely related concepts, but they differ in terms of format and purpose. The theoretical framework is used to lay down a text-based foundation of theory on which you'll build your study, whereas the conceptual framework visualizes the anticipated relationships between constructs and variables based on your understanding of the existing literature, as well as the specific context and focus of your research. Naturally, the two frameworks are not mutually exclusive. In fact, it's quite possible that you'll include both in your dissertation or thesis, especially if your research aims involve investigating relationships between variables. Of course, every research project is unique, and universities differ in terms of their expectations, so be sure to closely follow the project brief provided by your institution. If you got value from this video, please hit that like button to help more students find this content. For more videos like this, check out the Grad Coach channel and subscribe for plain language, actionable research tips and advice every week. Also, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support with your dissertation, thesis, or research project, be sure to check out our private coaching service where we hold your hand throughout the research process step by step. You can learn more about that and book a free consultation at gradcoach.com.